Mikey over here looking like a rally driver. Yeah, I want an open face helmet because of my beard. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what this thing is going to do. This is, uh, I've done some drag launches, now some gripping, and a couple donuts before. But it's a fully custom hand built rear wheel drive Civic. So we're going to see what it'll do. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. I just want to experience it because, you know, I've ridden in so many Honda Civics. I've driven Honda Civics, Integras, all that. Never been in a rear wheel drive converted one. So <laughs> this is exciting. Well, I'm no FD driver, so I'll do my best. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, exciting, exciting. I'm excited. I'm excited. Exciting. Are you trying something yeah. on it? Yeah, try it. All right. Yes! Hell yeah! Hey, come on, baby! Come on! Yes! Come on! was it? How was drifting, doing donuts in a rear wheel drive Civic? I got to be honest, the day started out really bad. Like I got out there on track and I, I felt overwhelmed and like, I almost felt like the car was undrivable and that's a bad feeling to have, especially a car you spent what, three, almost four yeah. years making. I don't know. It's been a long time. Finally got it out here. We've done a little, you know, we've done some stuff on Hoonigan this versus that when it was still kind of a prototype car. And it, that went okay, I guess. Yeah. We found out what was gonna break really fast and we fixed it, which was good. And then we did some skids in it and that was about it. Yeah. And then today, our first real track day where we're actually able to stretch its legs and it had some teething issues. 
You did. Yeah, we're still we're still learning the car, figuring out the car, what it likes, what it doesn't like, and most importantly, learning how to drive it. Yeah. yeah. So first uh, lap, I put it off track and tore the front lip off. So yeah, please let's, excuse let's take that. a look at that. And the let's, broken front let's, fender. Let's take a look at your damage. Oh yeah, poor and, guy. And I got to bring my my uh, 2003 2004 drift techniques back. Oh the no. Old drift, drift stitches for the bumper. Oh poor yeah, car. Yeah. So f carbon fiber front lip. She gone. So I've never actually had a chance to see it in this oh. configuration. Oh. I saw it when it was still like black and. It had like uh, a lot of the neon. Right? Yeah. So, uh, so this car, first iteration, was satin black, and the reason I did that was because there's so much carbon in the car, and I wanted to showcase it. The only real good way to do that was to make the car hot rod black and leave the carbon fiber satin black, which I thought was a really good look. What I didn't take into account was that it really hid a lot of the body lines and the styling that we did to the car, which was really cool, but she didn't really notice it because it was so dark. The plan all along for this car was to always be like a Civic Type R clone but rear wheel drive. So when it was time to make a change on the car, Evan, my partner actually suggested, hey, why don't we finally do the white that you wanted initially? And we did it and it's now an Anozatec wrap. It's, the black is still underneath here and we did still leave some of the carbon exposed, but I think it provides a pretty unique look at the body and the styling of the Mosey wide body kit, the wide uh, Motegi two piece racing wheels. Wait, so then generally speaking, this kit is for people- Street car. Who, who have front wheel drive yeah, yeah. cars. But, but, but so but. so I had to make this kit wider for us. It's not generally this wide. Like I think And the, you need it to be wider Yeah, almost. I'm actually gonna reach out to Mosey. So if you guys are watching this, get ready because I need another like 30 mil on the back of this because we need to get some two seventy fives under the back of this car. Yeah, so um so so many questions. Uh, <laughs> th this is your first time actually time attacking this yes. at grid life or even at any track at all. It, yeah, I mean, like, we, yes, yes. For all intents and purposes, yes. It's so interesting to me because the physics of this, like, you don't really know if it's going to work. Right. Because the, these are... There's so much custom stuff done to the suspension under here that it's like, I'll be honest, I was laying in bed last night like, oh, I hope nothing breaks. And because <laughs> the thing is, this is a tried and true chassis oh, yeah. for time attack. There's so many fast ones, yeah. even out here. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and, and to be honest, like, I guess more so to be fair, coming into today, I knew, I don't know how you felt, Quinn, but like, I knew there were gonna be really fast Hondas out here, and this was not gonna be the fastest one. It may make the most horsepower, it may look really cool, but you gotta swallow a little bit of humble pie and just know that, well, this is our first time out, and we need to do some learning. I got in the driver's seat, and my first couple laps, I was, beyond disturbed with how bad the car was right out of the box and now Quinn got in it and he pedaled it around the track and he came back he learned a few things he kind of taught me what he learned and then the really real eye-opener for me was going up to the skid pad with you which you guys will see in this video but like getting to actually throw the car around I don't know how you feel Quinn after you got back in the car but after that I felt way better out here yeah I knew the limit I now knew the limit of the grip because this thing is like right driving on ice out there yeah. And mind I, you, we're only running at 380 wheel today. This thing makes 550 wheel. We have this thing on gate spring pressure only. So add another 200 horsepower into the mix and this thing becomes a, an ice skater. Yeah, so like what are some of the things that you learned when you, when you took it out? Uh, mainly just predicting what the car was gonna do. So you get in it and you're surrounded by Honda and your natural instinct is I can floor it with no yeah, regrets. Yep, yep. And then you do that in this and you spin yeah. out halfway. So you kind of got to predict. It's almost like uh, almost like an E36 when you push it to the limit. It really just steps out on you. So kind of predicting that and predicting the car for that. And another big thing is because it's a short wheelbase, if you just let off the throttle, it will it, it will rotate on you. And so, and but in a it way, it's unsavable. probably good though to get around corners for it to rotate. Yeah, you you're like and when it you to lift, start doing that. it yeah. is. But you're it, like you in front wheel drive. It. When it when it rotates, your natural instinct is to get back on throttle because if it's front wheel drive, it'll pull the car back straight. But in this, it just makes it way worse. And so, <laughs> so there are other versions of Civics that have been rear wheel drive, and a lot or most use S chassis parts, right? Right. So, so subframes suspension so i think for those i think if you really want to build a purpose-built track car out of your rear wheel drive civic that's probably the way to go because all of that stuff is off the shelf where we wanted to keep this honda 
But then at that point, it's basically an S chassis with a Honda yeah. body. And right? right, and so that defeats the purpose for me. Not saying that that's wrong or not the best way to do it. I just really wanted to keep the, the theme of the Honda alive here. So we've got an S2000 running gear under this to custom subframes that we built in house. S2000, so then what about like the front suspension area? Yeah, so there's a lot of work under there. I mean, we basically just needed to build a carrier for the engine to sit on and then for the uh, steering rack to mount on, right? Because a steering rack in a, in a front wheel drive Honda sits really high and it goes through the subframe. So now in order to run a transmission through there, you can't have a steering rack there. So we had to move the steering rack down to a traditional steering rack location for a rear wheel drive car. So we had to build all this stuff. <laughs> and some of you guys with the keen eye might recognize that right there. Those are, that's actually AE86 front sway bar mounts, tension rods, oh, that's uh, the so whole cool. nine, the whole pickup points and everything. I basically scabbed and made it fit on the Civic. So you had a tub this we, I too, tubbed huh? that just because I wanted to. It didn't need uh, to be done. I, I wanted this thing to have some angle, and I didn't want to have interference issues. And does. I've always wanted to mini tub a car, let's be honest. And so this was kind of my like learning it, process. It has a lot of angle. Actually, so I tried to do figurettes and donuts in it. Eventually, I was able to do donuts one way. Yeah. But it was really, honestly, kind of it's impossible difficult. to transition because this isn't really set up for drift. No. It's set up for, I'm assuming, track day stuff. It's like well, maybe to like To be that. honest, it's not really set up. Like oh. we're, this is, like we said earlier, this is the first test day that we've done with the car. So we kind of are learning as we go here. And yeah, we were working towards a grip setup and then we took it out to the skid pad and tried to rip it. So what you're feeling up there was kind of, a, you know, the changes that we made throughout the day to make it stick out here on the track was probably working against us up there, but. So then what, <laughs> What's crazy to me about this is you just never see a K-Series motor in a Honda unless it's in a S2000 facing this right. way. It looks yeah. like an F-Series, right? And that's kind of the, the challenge with it is the suspension geometry. We don't know where it is. Like, yeah, we It's used... hard to measure that. The weight balance is kind of all questionable stuff. And so what's it going to handle like? Yeah. And that's kind of learning it and slowly pushing it to the limit. We found out what the limit was a few yeah. times today. <laughs> because we did use a lot of the stock Honda parts in the front suspension. We just modified them or added what we needed to those bits. So geometry wise, it's pretty much a front wheel drive front suspension geometry. Um, control arms, everything's all the same. The only thing we really changed was the uh, compliance arms for reaching towards the back, towards the front by using tension rods. And we used the stock uprights, the stock upper A arms and everything. So. In theory, A-arm suspension should work great. Um, and it does work good, but I think we're, where we're lagging is in a, I think we need to put a better coilover in it. I think we need to respring the car. We might need to change the bars out, the, the sway bars a little bit, maybe even not even run a rear sway bar. Um, Honestly, I think <laughs> the big thing is just bigger tires for you guys. Yeah. That's, like, that's the first step. Yeah, I think so too. 245s is just not gonna cut it with this much power, this, wheelbase and I, I mean you, you'll solve so much I feel like with that. I think that. so too. Yeah. So yeah so I think uh, the key to success is to get a wider rear fender. I think we're okay in the front. Um, this is a 245 in the front. If we went to a 275 out back with a wider rear fender I think we'd be in really good shape. It would kind of It would probably it turn in a lot nicer and things yeah. like that so who knows we got well, a lot of development to do. Let's talk about the inside. First of all I gotta tell you it brings me a huge smile to my face when I see you on track, especially when I'm driving and I see you in this thing. And I, <laughs> I just know that this is rural drive and yeah. you're just pedaling it. You can't, can't floor even. it out of the corners because this has a lot of power. My for, last pass, is. I actually was in fifth gear coming off the last turn and hit six before I got the brings on. So I was super happy. That was the only time all throughout the day that I was able to floor the car. And I, it took a lot to work up to that. Top, I wish I had top another. Top gear, you got to top gear. I was gear. in sixth gear by the end of the straight here, yeah. Yep. So the thing was hauling the mail. I just got to get it to stick now. You don't know, do you know the mile an hour? I at? don't, I don't. I would love to know. <laughs> Maybe next time we'll bring a speed gun with us. <laughs> it was, I guess we can I'll count, know, we can count right the how tack to read it. <laughs> I know it was fast. Yep. And so that's the thing, Larry, is like we're, we're working with 380 horsepower today. We've got our how tech set up and we've got... I think like six boost settings in here that we can actually up the boost just by, you know, the gear selectors here. And all you gotta do is reach down and tap that. Oh. And we have push to pass here. So on the straightaway here, if we needed to pass, 
you just touch that button, it gives you five seconds of full boost. It says warp speed. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that puts, that would put the car at 550 wheel versus 380, which is what we we're. Is that what you pushed to? I did to not, go? I did not touch that today. This thing ran at 380 all day today. Quinn, did you, did you play with the warp speed at all today? No, I didn't. I <laughs> honestly didn't want to. The car is super tail happy coming out of corners in the first place. And the last thing we need is more power. So I knew today coming in that tire size wasn't enough. I just didn't know to what degree it was going to be that. So I was hoping we could play around with the boost settings and go up to maybe two or three and just kind of see where it is. But it's just not enough tire. The, the other thing that's really cool about this is the tunnel that you guys made. Here. Yeah, so that's that was a project that took a little while. What we did was we actually sectioned it, kind of filleted the top off of it, and I raised it basically eight inches. I really wanted to get the factory. I don't know why, but I really wanted like it to look like a street car as you look through the windows. Yeah. And so the plan was to actually have a carpet tunnel cover and then have the CTR center armrest in here with the shifter console. And I basically just raised everything up. So I wanted it to feel kind of finished, you know, like a street car. This kind of reminds me of the S2000, like the height wise oh. for a Honda, you know? I yeah, it makes sense. Cool. Yeah. And because we used all S2000 stuff and it fits in the chassis in a similar fashion. So there was, you know, a lot of fab work done on the chassis to make all this work and it took a long time to do it but i think you know getting to enjoy it today was made it all worth the effort so then what transmission is this this is an s2000 transmission oh, it is so okay. it goes from a, a k20 turbocharged to an adapter plate from jsp fab that adapts the k20 to an f-series transmission f-series transmission to a custom drive shaft from drive shaft shop a custom drive shaft from oceanside driveline to the S2000 rear pumpkin or differential to drive shaft shop axles. Oh. And then, so that's only half of the recipe though, Larry, because how do you pass axles through something that never was meant to have axles in it? So we worked with S1, who is known for all wheel driving cars. The guy's name is Sone, awesome dude. He actually custom made us rear arms that bolt into the factory locations that have axle splines on them. So it uses an Integra hub bearing and it has axle splines inside of it. So it's a really neat thing. And like, you don't think about all this stuff until you actually go to do the project, right? And you're like, oh, I needed to figure this out. Oh, I need to figure that out. Oh wait, how am I gonna hang a diff in here? What, what's also cool to me is um, the e-brake actually works or the hydraulic handbrake. Yeah. I, I tried it and it locked it up right away. Yeah, so this is not your typical uh, twin caliper setup. This is actually an inline setup, which is a little inferior in my opinion, but because of the way the rear of this car is set up, we couldn't get two calipers on here, especially running 15 inch wheels. It just wasn't possible. Yeah, because to be able to mount another one. Yeah, well, uh, you know how- That's something that's already custom. Right, right. right? It wasn't necessarily the custom part, it's just, the, the real estate underneath the wheel to fit it. It's just not there. And so what we did was we put the biggest Willwood kit on here we could get. In fact, they made the rear brakes for us custom for this car. So it brakes really well. I think we actually need to add a bias inside here because yeah. it- uh, It's a little bit too much rear bias. It needs a little <laughs> less rear, yeah. <laughs> but man, this thing, flying colors, honestly. Like I'm really happy. I was very frustrated at the beginning of the day, very happy by the end of the day. It's so cool also because like you were mentioning the uh, hanging the diff, like the <laughs> the rear was never meant to no. have a diff. Well, it wasn't meant to be load bearing. Yeah, so, that, that's a good point. So there is like a, if you guys are familiar with Civics, it's basically a welded on subframe that welds to the unibody and it basically just, basically your lower control arms hang off of it. What we had to do is we, we thought we, oh, we'll just fortify it and we made a cross beam, like a bridge that goes up a little bit further in front of it that holds the, the front of the S2000 diff and then the bolts pass through what we fortified in the back. We had to add a lot of additional metal back there. When did the Hoonigans this versus that? <laughs> and uh, didn't know why it wouldn't do standing burnouts towards the end of the day. Well, we got back to the shop, put on a lift. We found out the pumpkin was just hanging there doing this because we basically ripped the forward bar beam out. It was a one by one stock steel beam and it just, sheared it right off the chassis, tried to rip everything out of the rear end of the car. And the factory carrier for the control arms was actually rolled forward yeah. up under. You could see where it was separating it from was, the chassis. It was violent. So. so we went back and refortified all that. We made braces and like now it's super stout and it'll sit here and do burnouts all day long with no issues. But it's those things that you kind of have to just 
build it, break it, build it better, and see if it holds. And we're now in a, in a position where it's staying. So that's, that's part of the fun. There are plenty of things here that are like iteration three or yeah. four just to get it to hold together. And work a true far. project car. Yeah. And that's what I like, honestly, about what you guys do at Throttle. It's not just like one and done. Yeah. You know, it's not like you build a SEMA car and you see it. Oh, cool. Wow, what a cool concept. All right, that. Right, right. You never see it again. No. This. Yeah, we use them. This is being used to the limit. I mean, I'm, I bounced the rev limiter a couple of times <laughs> today, you know? You know, without realizing. And also, this explains how long, why the first gear is so long. Yes. Because yeah. of the transmission. Yes, I didn't yeah. understand that. I thought you were crazy for just rah, 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 in first gear. But then in the S2000, yeah, if you, you watch, drive around town in first gear. If, if it makes it in the video, yeah, you actually pause and point at, he points at the gauge cluster because it says over rev warning yeah. on, the, on the IC7. Because yeah, I got it up there towards the high end. And he's like, and I was like, <laughs> bah, 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 bah. <laughs> it's okay. That's but awesome. Yeah, so that was, you know, that was another iteration thing, Larry. Because when we first started building this car, it was supposed to have a CRV diff in it. Ah. And then the more we got down the road of, well, how much power is this going to make? Oh, probably 400. Oh, we better really rethink this diff thing because we're putting all the power through it. The guys that are running those CRV diffs are actually running them on all-wheel drive, and only part of the power is going to the rear wheels where we're putting all of it there. So that's why we stepped up the S2000 diff. That solved our gearing problem because the gearing in the CRV diff was not ideal for the for the transmission we were running S2000 Trans. There's just a lot going on and a lot yeah. to figure out. And I think this is the best iteration of what this car could have been for what we were trying to accomplish. I honestly think once you guys get it dialed in, and if, especially if you put some really sticky tires on it and all of that sorted out, I think it could be a killer. Yeah, I, I think so too. Did you guys have a chance to weigh it at all? We haven't we have scaled not. it yet, but our guesses are low, low, low 2000s. Is. Yeah. That's... I mean, that's... Yeah, it's... It, it, you almost feel that, right? I mean, because... You can when, feel it. When you floored it, uh, just when we were up there, just for a second, you know, when you st before you started drifting, I was so blown away at how fast <laughs> it accelerated, you know? I, it just doesn't feel right. Yeah, I mean, because it it's you, You're just getting pushed versus pulled. And you can feel it start to kind of do this towards the top of the gear. It starts to step out. It's, yeah. it's a bizarre feeling for a Civic. Yeah, one of the reasons we went with the wide body is because we were we just finished dynoing the engine and you know tuning it and getting it up to that 520, 530. We went out to Barona Drag Strip, which is a drag strip local in San Diego, and I was doing the testing to make sure it was drivability was okay with it. I was trapping in fourth gear, still spinning. Every <laughs> single gear. Mind just you, first gear on, spinning, second, third, fourth gear, crossing the line spinning. It was ridiculous. That was so without like, the wide body. Yeah. That was, that was without the wide body. So, so we're like, so we there, need to put a lot of kit on this. <laughs> this project started as this was going to be a street car I was going to drive because I've always wanted a rear wheel drive hatchback Civic. And so when my partners were gracious enough to allow me to start this project on the throttle channel as a personal project. But a lot of other things happened in the meantime and the business ended up acquiring it and it could not be a street car anymore. So it went to race car and then all bets went out the window and it was like, all right, how much horsepower can we make? How crazy can we get? And this is what it became. It's so cool. So. That's why it kind of explains the interior too a little bit for you. I love it. I mean, like, look at this sticker too. VTEC Turbo. Yeah, that's actually off of a uh, FL, <sighs> or no, FK8. So cool. I, I love it. I, I love that you guys are actively out here pushing it. Yeah. And, you know, and not just this project, all the projects that you guys the do. The Supra, the yeah. Eclipse, the Viper, yeah. We're having fun. Now, I haven't really gotten behind the wheel of many of them. He's been driving the Viper Super, and the Supra and the Eclipse. The Supra's fun. I drove it here at this track for the Motegi track battle, and it is an absolute weapon <laughs> in a lot of ways and not enough in a lot. So yeah. we have a 15-inch rear brake on it for the drags. We could fit 15s for drag slicks, and it is just not enough for this track. The car makes 1,100 horsepower, and coming down the straight, we ran the circuit the opposite way we're running it today. You, it flies, but then you come up to that bank knowing you don't have enough brake, and it's just not a good. It's just not a good feeling. <laughs> a little you know? hairy. And we have a 6XD sequential on it, so it's flat shift. So you get it spooled up there and just run Bombing. through four gears. You know. I, I love you that you're turn. just essentially <laughs> using like a half mile or like a standing mile car on a small circuit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, know? it was fun. It was a lot of fun, uh, but it wasn't so like I was 
scared the whole time driving around the track. I'm like, dude, this thing could destroy us. You yeah, know? absolutely. Well, thanks for bringing this out. It was a pleasure to watch, and it's just so weird to see this thing burn rubber, make all the right noises. I'm glad you got to drive it. <laughs> oh, I, that's no, I'm instance. so I am <laughs> so stoked that I could say I legitimately drifted a Honda Civic that's Honda powered with Honda, Honda driveline. <laughs> I, I just, I mean, this is not the fast food McDonald's tray drifting. No, you know? no this no. is real. This isn't the like, we, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it, it was real, actual donuts. Yeah, they get to see it, right? You got yeah. it all on film. Uh, so cool. Awesome. Well, it's Thank always you awesome to run into you, Larry. We seem to bump into each other quite often, so. Thank you for having us on. Yeah, so this was just a quick overview. If you guys want to watch the whole thing, go to the Throttle channel. They have the whole build. How many episodes was the build? Oh, man. There's probably 40 episodes. It's, it's a whole series on this guy. Yeah. As you just hit the um, the video, um, what playlist. they call it? Playlist. Yeah, it's a playlist. Yeah. Right. Cool. Go, go check that out. Go check that out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.